Hi everybody and welcome uh, to today's video. Today I wanted to do um, a little bit of a, a musings video which I haven't done uh, necessarily in a while and I wanted to talk about uh, my process of uh, pen reviewing and then at the end of the video what I'll do is a little bit of a uh, what I'm writing with, show the, the couple of pens I have inked up at the moment and uh, uh, yeah why. Okay so my process of reviewing, I've re received a couple of questions over the last uh, little while about you know how I review and also I've seen a few reviews and things that have from some reviewers that have made me um, both question a couple of things in my reviewing but also like why we review and how we review and uh, so what I thought I'd do is I'd run through my process and how like from getting a pen through to reviewing uh, what the case may be and it changes slightly depending on the pen. Sometimes you need to do a review quickly. Uh, you know, for instance, if the pen is a Kickstarter uh, campaign or if it's being launched by a particular date. But in general, uh, this is sort of my process. So from getting a pen, the general turnaround process for me is a few weeks uh, from getting the pen to recording the review. Uh, and then beyond that, there's editing and post and photography if I'm doing it for it. Um, and then, you know, scheduling it, you know, to coincide with other things or, you know, for when I have actually time on the channel. Um, but once the pen arrives, I generally clean out the pen first. I always rinse it out. Um, I don't do a, a thorough clean. Um, I rarely do that uh, with a new pen, but enough to sort of get any residual stuff out of the nib and feed and all of that sort of thing. Then uh, I fill it with an ink of my choice, like a regular ink that I would use. Um, so that might be something like a Robert Oster Tranquility or a uh, Diamine Oxford Blue or Aurora Black or one of those inks that I use on a regular basis. I've always got something inked up with something like that. Uh, and then I get to know the pen. And getting to know the pen is really important. Um, it's not just how it feels like when you first pick up a pen or what, you know, like your feelings on the look of the pen are. All these things are very important, but those are first impressions. You cannot review a pen the moment you take it out of the package. You can't ink it up right with it and go, this is this pen and this is how it works. Like, we've all been in situations where we love a pen and then suddenly we have to write more than half a page and realise that there's ink starvation or that that group section that we seem to enjoy just becomes a little bit uncomfortable. All these issues, uh, you know, like ink flow and, uh, you know, basic sort of fundamentals of the build quality, you know, does the, the cap stay on? I had I reviewed a pen a couple of years ago that every time, unless I like really talked the cap on, it would come undone in my pocket. Uh, it would come undone in the case. If it was held in place in the case by the clip, it would just unscrew itself. Um, and you can't know that the moment you get a pen out of the box. So these are the things that take a little bit of time. Um, not only that, you know, how a pen writes, you know, I always try and have that ink in it and then clean it and put at least a second ink. Uh, sometimes I reverse that. Sometimes I might put a fun ink in a pen to start with uh, and then, you know, sort of do a more standard ink. Uh, sometimes I, you know, do a standard ink and then a slightly more fun ink if I want to include that in the review. Um, but there's always a second ink, there's always a second fill, there's always cleaning the pen because how a pen cleans is important. Uh, if it's a piston filler, if it's a you know vacuum filler, these pens take a slightly different way of cleaning than a, a cartridge converter or an eyedropper. Uh, and every pen, you know, reacts slightly differently depending on how it's made and the process. And like even a standard pen that uses a Schmidt converter into a Yovo nib housing, you know, requires slightly different cleaning perhaps. Like the same method, but you know, the actual process might differ slightly, how the material holds up to that cleaning. So these are all really important things that you have to know when you're reviewing a pen. If you're not taking the time to get to know the pen and understand the pen and obviously get to know how the pen writes, get to know how the pen feels in your hand over extended periods of time. You know, if you leave it for three or four days, or more and you pick it back up, is it going to write first time every time? Is it going to hard start? Is it going to have dried out? Um, Alami Safari will dry out if you leave it because that cap seal is not perfect. You don't know that in the first 15 minutes of using a pen. Um, so time with the pen is super important to get to know how it works, how it writes. And so, and the, in my opinion, the best reviewers of pens and any product are those who really know the product, 
who really know that item. Um, and so I try and do that. And so I spend a few weeks getting to know the pen. I write with it a lot, uh, be it long form journaling, short note taking, shopping lists, whatever the case may be, getting to know the pen, run it out of ink, clean it, refill it. And sometimes the review is on that second fill and depending on how much I love the pen, how much I use it, sometimes that's the third or fourth fill even. Um, but if it's a new pen in my possession, it's normally, as I said, about three weeks from start to finish. And, uh, and then actually the reviewing process uh, is then my knowledge of the pen. I do research into a little bit into the, the, you know, the manufacturing of the pen, you know, where it was made, things like the pricing and the availability, uh, because there's all these things go into my philosophy on pens. You know, a pen, need, a pen needs to be somewhat affordable. For it to be a pen that I want in my collection and to use in my collection, it has to be relatively affordable, replaceable. Um, if it can be, you know, like maintained, like a Twisby pen is great. You can take those things apart completely, disassemble them, clean them, put them back together, and they work as well as they did out of the box, sometimes better. Uh, but doing that research into the pen, doing that research into the brands, doing that research into the manufacturing and... Uh, you know, also just getting to know what else is around in that, like that price point and how it actually fits into the price point. Like is another acrylic pen gonna cost 165 American dollars? What do you get for that? Do you still get steel nibs? Do you still get cartridge converter? Is it a piston? These are things that you take into account. And so the couple of things I have issues with with doing pen reviews is calling a first impressions a review. Um, a first impression is an impression. You pick up the pen, you write what you go, I like this pen, I like how it feels, I like how it writes. Um, and also, you know, why is someone reviewing a pen? I don't make money from my reviews. I don't get paid to do them. Um, I don't get paid to do Expediator reviews. I don't, you know, like if someone wants me to review their pen, this is a hobby for me. It's a hobby I enjoy and I love sharing it with you, my, my, my audience. Um, we're all passionate about this hobby and we all want the best pens and we all want the, the best, you know, um, information. That's what I want to share. And so when I'm doing a review, I'm reviewing it for you. I'm not reviewing it for me. I'm not reviewing it for an income or anything like that. Um, so I try and be as unbiased as possible and as honest as possible because if I say a pen is great and writes super smoothly and you get the pen and it's rubbish, then, you know, where's my credibility in this? And so I do take great care in reviewing the pens and how I talk about the pens and how I, you know, and, and being honest about my, my intentions. Um, you know, if a retailer is trying to review a pen they are selling, are they going to be 100% honest? You know, if a pen is rubbish, are they going to say it's rubbish? Probably not. Will they find positives? Absolutely. Can I find a positive in, a, in any pen? Hopefully, like every pen I've reviewed, I've been able to find pros and cons. Um, it's very rare for me to, like firstly, like I'm also purchasing a lot of the things that I review. Um, I'm, I'm very grateful to the companies and the retailers who do send me things to review. They make this channel possible. Um, and you know, the viewers who have supported in the past with providing things or, you know, um, you know giving you know, vouchers for things or whatever the case may be. Um, it's all, you know, I'm, I'm incredibly grateful for that. And I think that there's a, you know, that, that's something that, may, as I said, makes this channel possible, but I do purchase the things. And before I purchase something, I generally do some research myself. I look at the size of the grip section. I look at the shape. I look at, you know, the, the what nib is on there. If it's got a Yovo nib on it, then the chances are it's going to write fairly well. Um, if it's got an in-house made nib, you know, like, let's do some research. Let's see what other people say about it. Let's watch some writing samples. So I'm watching other reviews and I'm learning from them as well. But if a retailer is reviewing a pen, then there's an issue. They, is there an issue of you know, impartiality there? Are they gonna be able to call it out? Um, that's up to them and their their business model. Um, but when I'm reviewing, I'm really careful about being honest and uh, showing the pen for what it is and giving my true feelings about it. Um, even if I do love the pen, if I, you know, I, the chances are I have, if I bought that pen, I've done the research and know it's gonna be a pen I like because it's my, you know, my dollars being spent on it. 
Um, so yeah, I do tend to occasionally review things positively, but that is because I actually do genuinely really like them. I don't get anything for doing a positive review. I don't get anything for doing a negative review. Um, and there have been things I have reviewed negatively, uh, and I don't like doing that. Like, I don't like reviewing badly because someone's put a lot of effort into creating that pen, designing it, um, and also people are trying to sell that pen to, you know, provide a uh, living for themselves. So if I can find positives, I will, but I don't have any obligation to do that. Um, so the ethics of that, in my opinion, are important because I'm hopefully in some way influencing your spending, uh, and that's something I don't want to muck with. It's something I don't want to, you know, a trust that I don't want to destroy. So I make sure that if I'm doing a first impressions, I make it clear it's a first impression. And later when I do a review of an item, that will be something you can watch and really get a sense of how I have discovered and used the pen because I have used it for a period of time. Um, and also if I've been sent an item for review, I make it clear to the person who has sent it to me that uh, I will be honest and I will be uh, you know, like I'm not going to, I'm not going to give it like a raving positive review, you know, if it doesn't deserve it. So that's my process. That's my thoughts on it. And, uh, you know, um, if you're, you know, like ask me the questions about the items. I love engaging in the community. Talk to me. Um, you know, if there's something you don't agree with, I really want to hear about that. Uh, because, you know, also if you comment in the video and you say, oh, actually I found this, that might not be something I discovered. But if you've discovered it, then that's something that the audience deserve to know as well. So always share that stuff. So that's my thoughts on all of that. Now let's talk about what I'm writing with. Now we're in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic and it is pretty, uh, like where Melbourne, where I live, is in stage four lockdown. We can't go within, you know, any distance of our house and, you know, there's no work and stuff. So the pens I'm using at the moment are pens I'm just enjoying writing with at home, taking notes while I'm teaching, that sort of thing. Um, and so I have only five pens that I'm really using at the moment. Four use fountain pen ink. One of them is not a fountain pen. It's being prepared for review. Uh, and one is a ballpoint pen. I recently changed in my Hobonichi to writing with a ballpoint pen because like planning student lessons out in advance and things like that, like waiting for the ink to dry to turn the page or putting the blotter sheet in just was an inconvenience I didn't need. So I've decided to use just a ballpoint pen. But if you can use a ballpoint pen, not even a rollable, like a tri Retro 51, same thing. Um, so what I've been just using is a, a Uniball Jetstream uh, ballpoint pen. It's smooth, it's reliable, it fits in the little um, pen loop in the case that I cut, carry my Hobonichi in, and uh, it dries instantly. So Uniball Jetstream, like if you're gonna use a ballpoint pen, this is one of the ones you use. Uh, I think they're really wonderful. And um, so, yeah, and, and affordable, you know, only a few dollars really. So um, you get a good writing experience. Then the four other pens, and I'm gonna show you them now and then I'll do a quick uh, close up so you can see some writing. I just have them here in the slip from my Galen Leather um, zip and slip four, uh, pen, four slot pen pouch. And we'll start with the non-fountain pen. Um, it is this by uh, Yuka's, it's the Metis Black Grid. Uh, it's a felt tip pen that uses fountain pen ink. Um, I did a first impressions uh, video of this, uh, this a little while ago and reviews coming up. Um, it said it uses a fountain pen ink cartridge. I have diamond oxide blue in it. Um, being reviewed and I'm using this for, to take some notes and things like that and it's it's an interesting interesting pen. The three fountain pens are the Pilot Custom 823 which has a, I've got a broad nib on. It's got one of the best, I think this nib is just one of the best nibs I have in my collection. It's just such a glorious thing to write with and this is inked with Robert Oster uh, fire and ice. I then have the uh, Retro 51 Tornado Stealth. This is the second model with the slightly different grip section and the Yovo nib um, as opposed to Schmidt. Just a really lovely pen, lovely to write with and I just love the look of it. And this is inked with Diamine Terracotta. And then the last pen I have here, and this is another one that is being prepared for review. Um, I'm not sure when this video is actually going live, but the launch of this pen in Australia. It's the Faber-Castell Hexo. Um, two models of this and uh, really nice, you know, simple entry level pen from Faber Castell. A little more expensive than some of their entry, entry level pens, um, but a nice pen nonetheless. And I've got this inked with um, Carp Ink Electro Optic Violet, uh, which is a purple ink that I am just absolutely loving. And you know what? I really enjoy this pen. It's wet enough um, and smooth enough and 
but good sort of everyday writer pen. So let's have a look at these in closer detail uh, and I'll just come back and uh, say a quick cheerio. Okay, let's look at these pens right. I will just give a quick writing sample here with the uh, Uniball Jetstream. This is the black at 0 0.7 millimeter. Um, it's, you know, like they're very smooth for ballpoint pen. It's a, it, you know, it's a, it's a nice mechanism. It's a nice ball. And uh, while the ink is not super dark, um, it is at least consistent. And, you know, there's a very slight, you know, bit of smudge there, but it's pretty, it dries pretty quickly. And like on the Tomo River of the, uh, the Hobonichi, it's good to have something that dries pretty quickly. Uh, next is the Yuka's uh, pen. This is a felt tip pen, and this is the one uh, millimeter. It says so right there on the on the top of uh, the uh, the section. Um, and once again, very smooth. Um, a lot of people on my first impressions video, there were a number of people who sort of mentioned um, some issues with, you know, drying out. I haven't noticed that yet, uh, but I know there would be the capacity for it. Uh, but for me, it writes, this is Dymine Oxford Blue Ink, uh, and you can see, actually I'll just write that there. Um, you can see it writes nice and dark. You can see also though from the beginning of the writing through to the end of the writing, it does lighten off. And it's this sort of writing we end up with getting a lot. Um, this is like very saturated, very dark, almost where the ink is sort of, you know, a little bit uh, thicker. Um, and this is sort of what we get a lot of the writing, but still a beautiful uh, little writing instrument. And if, if you can't use a fountain pen for whatever reason, something like this, uh, these Yuka's Design, um, Felt tip pens are actually not a bad option. There's lots of pens out there that use fountain pen ink. I don't just mean liquid ink, I mean fountain pen ink. Like this is a a cartridge from Diamine of, you know, like Oxford blue fountain pen ink. Um, so an interesting option for that purpose. And I just think a cool design. Like it, to me, it looks a little bit, for some reason, it sort of has a feeling of like a, a Casio digital watch, you know, one of those metal ones from the 80s or something. Just a very vintage inspired sort of cool look to it. Uh, next we had the Pilot Custom 823, a great pen. I'm just gonna release the little valve on the back there uh, to do some writing. Um, one of my favorite pens, I think one of the perfect everyday writing pens. Um, the nib is just glorious. As I said, this is a broad. Um, and the ink is Robert Oster. Fire and ice. Great ink, great pen, lots of sheen on this ink, you know, on, you know, on the right paper, of course. Um, but this pen is, you know, you can see here still, we've got bits of this writing from earlier on in the, that are still absolutely wet. So lays down a lovely amount of ink, a lovely line, it's consistent, it feels nice. It, it just like reeks of quality, like the build is just beautiful. Um, it's not a cheap pen, you do pay, you know, for it, uh, but just a really lovely quality pen. And uh, as I said, one of my every perfect sort of everyday writers and one of those sorts of pens I go, oh, I would love to get this in a fine or a fine medium or something like that, just to, you know, give myself the option of something that's not quite as broad. Because while that's not a super broad broad, uh, it's certainly, you know, on the broad side. Next is the Retro 51 Tornado. And this is once again a medium. Oh, it's the Stealth. Uh, is it a medium? Which I, apparently I can't write. Uh, and the ink is diamond terracotta. Hmm. Um, Yovo near the new section. Nice pen, simple, smooth writing. This is an ink that I find needs to be in a fairly wet pen and this isn't the wettest pen going around. Um, but you know, like it certainly does the job. 
and I just like the look of the pen. I think it's got a very cool design. The last pen is the Faber Castell Hexo, one of the two models of this pen that I am looking at. This is the black, it's an aluminium, aluminium pen uh, and brown section built for really for everyday writing. It posts very nicely and, and deep and secure and all of that. So this is a, uh, an, a really interesting pen in a fairly competitive price point. Um, not super cheap, but like not cheap cheap, but certainly, you know, relatively affordable in comparison to a lot of other pens on the market. Faber Castell. So I think this is a medium as well. This is not the same nib that you get on the loom or the emotion or anything like that. It's this is the same one that you get on the um, like the writing or the, the grip, I think, um, which is not, uh, in my opinion, as good. It's a very small nib, um, but it is still very smooth. Um, and, you know, reliable, super reliable. Um, electro optic violet. And also that ink is just like, I really, really enjoy this ink. That purple is, it's vibrant, it's dark. It's got great shading. There's a little bit of sheen on the right, you know, paper. Um, and, you know, in terms of the wetness of this pen, like it's not a gusher, but like we're definitely putting down like a nice amount of ink and it's smooth and it does the job beautifully. So in terms of an everyday writer, one of, you know, one of those pens you could just like carry around and write with nonstop. It's comfortable in the hand, it's a decent size. It's light, just a really good pen, and this has been uh, it's been released internationally, of course, already, uh, and I think this is being released in Australia uh, fairly soon, which I think is a really good move and um, a really nice pen. So thank you for watching. Um, uh, you know, listening to my process and thoughts on reviewing and why I review and what's important to me with reviewing. Um, I think it's. You know, it's not just sitting around writing with pens and saying what I like and don't like. I actually, there is a responsibility to it because people are spending their dollars based on what you say. Uh, so I take that responsibility really um, close to my heart. And uh, I hope you appreciate the fact that, you know, like this is something that I do take time and care with. Um, I certainly love doing it and it's a fun hobby for me. So thank you for watching. Um, if you've got, you know, if you want to get in touch, you can drop me a message, a comment below here or drop me an email on Instagram or Twitter at, at the underscore offstage underscore me. Uh, so you can follow me over there. Um, also, uh, if you'd like to support the channel um, by sponsoring a review or providing an item for review or uh, whatever the case may be, drop me an email. I'd love to hear from you and let's see what we can do. Because uh, as I said, I make no money from this channel. I buy a lot of the products uh, myself. I'm very grateful to the companies, as I said, that do support my channel. Um, but, um, you know, particularly in a time of this, like with COVID, where um, as an opera singer, my income is, um, my working capacity is very, very limited. Um, you know, support is very much appreciated. So thank you so much. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you soon.